Welcome to Farmer's Kitchen with me, Helen Farmer, presented by Spinney's here on Dubai Eye 103.8. Whether you're watching or listening, it's our fabulous new foodie show where we're inspiring you to cook up a storm in your own kitchen. Come on. Over the series, we're going to be creating some delicious dishes using Spinney's ingredients, organic and free range, and they'll be cooked by passionate chefs at JA The Resort at Jebel Ali Beach. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to be taking a special look at dishes for Ramadan and Eid to make things really, really special for you and your family. We're going on a meat treat here at Spinney's here today and looking for some meat for a big feast, a really special occasion. And lamb is the meat of choice. I love lamb, so can't wait to find out more. We're going to be giving you some clues to what this week's mystery dish is, so pay attention. And then we're going to head to JA Palm Tree Court to meet our chef this week. It's Elias Kandelaft of Pinch Gourmet, a fantastic catering company. He's been creating a feast worthy of your family. The live audience will be trying it and he'll be answering their questions too. Ramadan is such a special time to spend with family and friends and of course to enjoy eating together too. We're making a feast today with lamb and I can't wait to find out which one we should choose because the selection here at Spinney's is fantastic. So where do we start? Delighted to be joined by Tom Harvey now. He is the protein manager here at Spinney's. Hi Tom. Hi. We've got a really impressive array of lamb in front of us. So we are cooking with lamb today and I can't wait to find out a little bit more about it. So let's start with roasting. It's a real yep. favourite, especially at Ramadan. What would be the best choice of cut or even origin for roasting? Well, I think the, the amazing thing about lamb is actually there's so much versatility and so many different cuts that you can roast and, and roast in different ways. So big favourite for me, the shoulder on the bone. It's a, quite a fatty cut, so it actually goes really well if you're slowly, slowly cooking it. So if and people are late, then it doesn't really matter for another no, half hour? Absolutely no problem at all. That, that can just stay cooking for an hour or two longer if you needed to. But you'll really get it so it's sort of, the, the, the meat will be sweet, succulent, and that, that fat will start to render down and give you an amazing sauce, but it's, it's, it's really full of flavor. And in terms of origin, where at Spinney's do you source your lamb from? So we bring our lamb from two places at the moment. Some comes from Australia, and then our premium lamb all comes from Wales. And what makes Wales so special? Well, Wales, I guess the, 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 the land that the lambs live on, that they're farmed on, it's, it's about as different from Dubai as you could possibly get. It's hilly, it's green, and it's wet. There's loads of grasses. The lambs love to eat the, the, the new sweet grasses that come through, and that comes straight through into the flavor of the meat. A lot of people are very passionate about organic, and I know Spinney's is too. In terms of taste, does that impact the lamb? Organic versus non-organic? Depending on who you talk to, some will say yes, some will say no. The big difference with organic, as far as lamb goes, is the land that the, the animals are reared on, that has to be certified organic. But most of the time, there's certainly things like the Welsh lamb that we buy, it's not organic, but it's such rugged and a natural landscape that it, it, it almost could be. And a lamb is just about the most natural and, and, and wild meat that we, that we eat of all of the products that we have on sale in Spinney's. What's your favorite way to cook and eat lamb? Um, that slow roast shoulder. So You're making us hungry. Two, four, four or five hours in the oven, just let it fall off the bone and then it's great meat for shredding to do into all sorts of other dishes with the leftovers. You know, the only thing better than a roast is a bit of leftover Absolutely. roast. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And in terms of food safety, it's obviously hugely important to us as consumers. What about to the brand and how does that work throughout that food journey? It's massively important. I mean, we, we are selling quality food and if we don't protect the quality of that all the way through its journey, um, it's, uh, it, would, it would be a, a potential disaster for us. So we have very, very strict controls. Some of them are ours and some of them are controlled by the government. So both the UK and the UAE governments put some very, very strict rules in place that we have to follow. Um, there are vets at the, uh, at, the, at the abattoir to make sure that the lambs are in good condition when they, um, when, when they arrive for processing. Um, there's then various hygiene inspectors through that process 
that uh, are, are making sure the quality and the butchery standards are exactly what we expect and what we require um, before it leaves the UK. What about temperature control? So te How does that work? Well, temperature is obviously a really important thing. So we actually, because we control the whole journey of the of the food, we have temperature loggers that go in every single shipment. So I can see from the moment that lamb leaves the processor until the moment it gets to spinach shelves, we can see that the temperature has been track it. properly controlled the entire way. And then we know it's good. And if we see a problem, it doesn't come to our shelves. Have you guessed from our lamb, our ingredients and our other clues what we're going to be cooking this week? So stay with us here on Dubai I 103.8 as we go to JA Palm Tree Court to meet Chef Alias and cook up that feast. Thank you so much. Welcome to Farmer's Kitchen with me, Helen Farmer, presented by Spinney's and here at the gorgeous JA Resort. We're at Palm Tree Court in the kitchen of White Orchid. It's very much a professional kitchen. We're surrounded by ingredients, but don't worry, we're going to be including a recipe this afternoon that you can cook at home. So while we have a professional chef with us, it's all about being accessible and easy and feeding friends and family. And that chef is Chef Alias Kandelaft. He is the chef managing director of Pinch Gourmet, a catering company here in Dubai that does small scale dinner parties at home, but also huge events around Dubai and famed for its iftar. Welcome, Chef. Thank you for having me. Now, we're going to some clues away this afternoon about what we're going to be cooking. We've already met the team at Spinney's and found that gorgeous piece of Welsh lamb. Should we have a look at it? Yes. Let's yes, get yes, it yes, out. Yes, yes. So we met Tom Harvey, who's the protein manager at Spinney's, and he, he helped us pick this piece of meat. The Welsh lamb, I never knew, it's truly seasonal in the sense that the lambs eat different grass throughout the year, they eat different herbs, so you even get a different taste of meat depending on the season. Yeah. As a chef, what do you look for when it comes to choosing meat? Well, obviously taste is a big thing. Texture, like how, how well it cooks, you know, lamb is one of those very forgiving meats that you can cook it for long periods of time, but if you get a cheaper quality one, you know, they tend to dry out, they're not as flavorful. So. What about, we're doing a, Med um, a Middle Eastern dish here, of course, for Ramadan. What kind of flavors do you think represent the Middle East and really lend themselves to this meat? The nutmeg, the cinnamon, the allspice. You have the Arabic allspice, so they have garlic inside, they have cumin. You know, these are the, the flavors that really stick, come out. You know, sometimes people marinate it with yogurt. Yogurt is known to tenderize lamb. So it really depends on what you want to do and what flavor you're going for. And you have this, your own pinch gourmet lamb. When it comes to serving your iftar, what are the star dishes and why do you think they're so popular? So the lamb that we're going to be doing today that we do in the iftar is a little bit different than what we're doing here. The lamb that we're doing at the iftar, we, we mix it with a risotto, so a saffron risotto. So it's kind of like the topping piece. This one's going to be a little bit different today. Can you guess what that mystery dish is this afternoon? Our audience is here. Everyone say hi. Hi. Uh. <laughs> our audience will be asking some questions later. I'm sure some of the questions that might be on your mind too, and even tasting our dish as well. Coming up, I'm going to be brave enough to start cooking in the kitchen with Chef Alias. I've even changed into my trainers, ah, so I am nice. fully ready for action. More clues coming your way. Stay with us on Farmer's Kitchen, presented by Spinney's. We're here at JA Palm Tree Court, here on Dubai Eye 103.8. So before I get cooking, mm -hmm. can you reveal what is the dish we're making on the show? So we're doing the Pinch Gourmet Rustic Lamb Roast. It's a recipe that uh, my mom created and we, I put my little twist to it. We've got potatoes there soaking. We're going to get them in the oven shortly. So Perfect. what are you going to be doing while I'm chopping these carrots? So while you're chopping the carrots, I'm going to probably move that out of the way for you. I'm going to be putting the potatoes on the pan. So what are we doing? Are you giving them a bit of a parboil now? Yeah, so I'm going to parboil them first and then what we're going to do after is that we're going to strain them. Mm -hmm. We're going to put them in a roasting pan. We're going to have add some butter and spices or even ghee butter. That works really well as well. Ooh, nice. And then we're going to roast them for about 20 minutes in the oven at 150 degrees. Right, I have cut carrots. I have well not cut done. myself. I could not be prouder. Well done. This is going to be part of the vegetables that you are going to be roasting. Now we're going to add a little bit of rosemary to that and then I'm just going to give a nice one, two, that's it. Right, our garlic is crushed. Crushed the garlic. Just chucking it in? It just yeah, goes in with the it. onions that's and the, and that's the carrots. That's all you got to do. Okay. So what we're going to also do, we have some allspice berries. I'm just going to add that in, a bit of flavor. 
and then we're going to keep that aside. What I would like to start doing is I would like to start roasting. Yeah, let's get this lamb, lamb out. All so right. two kilos of Welsh lamb here, found at Spinney's. And how long are we marinating for? Uh, we did this overnight, which I highly, highly recommend. But Four hours. In the hours. real world, for those of us who can't overnight marinate. In the real world, you can make some time and do it oh, overnight. Chef. <laughs> that's that's what, my answer to you. What could we get away with? Uh, four, four hours. hours. Four hours is good. So we've got our pan. It's been on the heat for some time it's now. And what oil are you using to cook it? Uh, sunflower oil. Pure sunflower oil. It's That's the sound you want to hear. Already hearing the sizzle. Chef, this already smells fantastic. Yes. So we're getting a sear on the lamb. Yes. And this is going to be in the pot for how long getting that sear? We wanted to get that golden what we call the GBD, the golden brown delicious. So you want to... GBD, golden brown <laughs> There delicious. we go. Brilliant. You kind of want to give it that sear. When you sear a piece of meat, it has what's called the Maillardic reaction, which kind of caramelizes the meat, gives it a little bit of sweetness. It's really, really important to do that with any kind of meat, steak, lamb. After we're done with this, I'm going to transfer it onto a roasting pan. We got it like pretty nice and brown. Okay. So I'm going to take the lamb out. I'm just going to put it on a roasting tray right here. And keep that on the side. Now, Our the audience veggies. is smiling right now because it smells absolutely delicious. Now, there's so much flavor in that pan, that's not going to waste, no. is it? You're going to bring me those veggies. Bring Good. me those veggies. <laughs> we chef that I cooked and uh, chopped so lovingly earlier. So, yeah. so we've got rosemary in there. We've got uh, rustically chopped carrots and onions. Now, what we want to do is give it a little bit of color. And whoop, there we go. Pop that. Making, in a, making a give it a bit of color. So there's a lot of flavor at the bottom of this pan. One, when we add our veal stock or water, we're going to scrape the pan aggressively so that we can get all that flavor into the gravy. So you can see that over here. And how long is that going to be roasting in with that lovely flavor? Uh, you mean the, the veggie or yeah. like right how, now? How long are the veggies going to be in? So uh, you got to get a bit of color in it, you know, get a little bit of char. Like with other stock, so like chicken stock, you don't want to add too much color because chicken stock needs to be clear. That's a very French traditional way of thinking. I don't really believe in it, but you know, I think that it is a big part of it. Smell has got even more concentrated. Yes. I can really smell the rosemary. And it's pretty much ready. Okay. I've mixed the tomato paste. We are now going to add the veal stock, which is in this drawer down here. Yes. We've got two ready to go. Veal demi glace from Spinney's. If you're. Do you want me to open this, chef? Yes, please. If you're doing it at home, this is fresh. It's really good. I did get it at Spinney's. It's really, really yummy. Because uh, veal stock takes about six to eight hours to make. You don't have no time for that. No one's got time for no that. No one's got time for that. Only I have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your job. Exactly. So Can now I'm adding the veal demi glace. I'm mixing all that in together. We're going to take the lamb back into the pot. He's having a lovely bath. There we go. I'm going to try and get it in. So turning that lamb around, just positioning to like it coat the, it. Yeah, positioning it at the bottom of the pan yeah. so it's as deep as possible. Pretty much. Stock. It's a braising technique. Braising is basically cooking a protein in, uh, in a liquid, in a small amount of liquid. Because, and then, you know, basically you're going to cover it up. It's going to steam the lamb. It's going to keep all the flavor inside. Spuds, I think, are ready. Mm -hmm. Now what do we do? You are going to cut them. Okay, yeah. Let's just clear that up for you. Thank you. So, and when I say in half, probably like uh, so length, horizontal. Uh, lengthways rather than yes. crossways. Okay, and why is that? Um, just looks nicer. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's not just about. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the crazy chef in there. But that's it. And uh, another thing is, you know, when you serve a dish to a customer, they get the dish in front of them, they're taking pictures, no one touched the food, and, and then the food gets cold because they need to get it out at the same time. You can help me here. Tell you what, you, okay. your fingers must be seriously, yep, seriously strong. I have zero strong. feeling in my fingers. Because <laughs> I can barely touch these hot potatoes. Our lamb is in the pot, it's got those beautiful um, chunky vegetables, it's got that lovely veal stock too. What is next for our lamb? You want to get it to a roaring boil. This is good. Sorry, roar, did I say rolling? Or a rolling boil. You're going to Cover that up straight to the oven. All right, so into the oven it goes. Yeah. And I cut my, uh, cut my potatoes very competently earlier. Um, we're using baby potatoes, you said for? 
A buttery flavor? Buttery flavor, but I did add more butter or ghee. What is it with chefs and butter? Every time I ask when something smells and tastes so good, the answer is always... Butter is better. Butter is better. So we've got our lovely potatoes here and they have been coated in ghee. So what are we going to add to them for a bit of extra flavor? I'm going to add some lemon and black pepper. This okay. is really nice, goes really well. You don't need to add a lot of salt because this kind of has a little bit of that. Plus we salted the water before boiling. Uh, we're going a little funky today, adding potato a little bit of potato spice. spice. I've this never heard of this one. Really Can I smell good. it? Yeah. It's almost got um, a bit of a chickeny smell to it. Like uh, a chicken salt and I guess, garlic, maybe? there is maybe? no chicken inside, I wouldn't it imagine. It smells amazing. Yeah. Right, so some herbs, some spices, some salt and pepper. Mix it up. Get my hands in? Yes, get dirty. All right, so we're coating these baby potatoes, and because of that ghee, they are just absolutely soaking up. And all they're of shiny those. too. Okay. <gasps> this is a treat. Out. Make sure there's enough salt. Is there anything that we can add? Looks is it good? Incredible. Good. Ready to go? Yes. Roasting pan. So this tastes so buttery. It's got that lovely mm. salt, but not overly salty. And we've exactly. got all those fresh herbs in the lamb that's going to be complementing it. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. That's the perfect way to Get do it. Get them in the oven. Let's do that. The lamb has been in the oven. Chef Alias is ready. Come on, all bring right. it over. I can smell something amazing already. All right, all right. So just careful. This is a little bit heavy. So it's in a big cast. Wow. Ooh. Look at this. It's already in such a rich, deep sauce. Let's go. Now, the thing with the lamb is it's super tender. And now I'm going to transfer that. So the lamb is going here. onto the chopping See, board and the meat is already, already falling off. But that's why it's called the rustic lamb roast. You know, We're not trying to be pretty today. No, no, no. Pretty is for fancy Michelin star restaurants. My potatoes Good are job. ready. Good so, job. So, cut lengthways as instructed. Mm -hmm. um, got that beautiful buttery taste and some lovely spices as well. So, we'll have those with our lamb. Perfect. Okay. Carrots still remain. I'm going to ask you to help me Of course, here. sir. So, now we're going to strain... Everything into the small this. pot, yes. Okay, I'm holding the pot, I'm holding the sieve. The gravy is going in. And like, look, it already like reduced a it's lot. It's so, so silky. One trick that we sometimes do if we want to make it sweeter, if you don't have the date syrup or the honey, the carrots are really sweet, so mush them up. And you'll get that from it. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll just, just like shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, like shake it. Yeah, thing. okay, the... the uh, Juice is coming through. Okay, ready? Okay, so Ooh. we've got. Can I tip it? Yeah, no, just throw it in. Okay. We're, we're done with this. Really important. I'm going to put so it So this right sauce now. goes onto the hub. Onto the hub. Let's clean as you go. Our audience will be tasting the final dish very, very shortly. I'm just going to get a bunch of different spoons. No cross contamination. Absolutely. So a tablespoon of the uh, whole grain? A teaspoon. Yeah, yeah, let's okay, not, I'm judging. Let's not go it. crazy. Here? Yeah. I'm okay. going to put this between these. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. so plop that in. Yeah. Spoon to the side. Right, we're going to say a little bit of this. Teaspoon as well. Put that here. And then date syrup. Put that inside. Thank you very much. Okay, here. just. It's a I'll giant look. whisk. A giant whisk. This. I didn't have a small one. <laughs> and, and keep I, it on quite a high heat at this point? No. Or not? It doesn't really if you want to reduce it a lot, yes, but. You know, we have a nice texture. Like, you see all the grains right there from the grainy mustard? Oh, there it is. It's so bubbling you want up that. lovely. Yeah. Okay. And the fancy French, French chefs will tell you, stop whisking. Do and that. just a little like shimmy of it, it. Yeah, let it incorporate in the sauce. Let's get it on the lamb, chef. Come on. All right. I'm going to take another spoon over here. Oh, there we go. It's right there in front of me. I, um, I don't think I'm going to need to ask twice, but do we have any audience members who would like to come up and have a taste? I think we should also put yes. our, uh, your potatoes right next to it. I'll pop some potatoes on as well. All right. They deserve a bit of uh, a bit of love. A bit of air time. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Maybe we can bring it closer to us okay. so we can plate it better. All right, come on, lamb. All right. Wham bam. Thank and would you, you put you putting the gravy over the potatoes or just over the lamb? Uh, for the sake of presentation, no. Okay. But we would always have some gravy on the side. If you want to put more potatoes, let's make this plate look yeah. really nice. Absolutely. And any yeah. garnish, any uh, extra well, herbs you, on top? You always want to try and get as many colors as you can. 
I'd say parsley, chives, you know, chop them up. We can add it. Maybe I can get you to do that. I, I feel like I've done enough hard work for oh, one okay, of us. Okay, fine. <laughs> See, there we go. I'm fine at chopping on the rustic, chunky side, but mm. any kind of fine chopping, yeah. the anxiety kicks See, in. See, look at the grains from the mustard. It makes a bit. So it's just happy. covered that lamb in that beautiful gravy. It's taking all of my willpower not to just Oba. lick it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Oh, there you go, guys. Yes, guys, of course. I in. think you can dig in. Dig in. Go yeah, ahead, go guys. ahead. Let's go. This mm -hmm. smells just phenomenal. It smells so comforting, like a real winter Very warmer. Mm. And I can't imagine anything more welcome after a day of fasting. What I think is really special about mm. this, how long was it in the oven for in the end? Uh, about seven hours. So. so you could do that. So what taste are you getting there? It's soft, it's very juicy, and I can taste all the flavors you in can. it. Like, yeah, it's yeah. very good. It's, it's, it's very delicious. Good. Very arabic -y. Is it? Mm. Huge thank you to Spinney's for all these amazing ingredients. Mm. From the fresh herbs to the Welsh lamb, the jarred products, the spices, everything you could need for a fantastic feast at home. And if you've got any ingredients you need some inspiration for, get in touch on the website. You can go to dubaii1038.com. You can find this recipe online there too. Contact us and we might just get some of our chefs to get in touch and offer some inspiration. I hope you've enjoyed our first ever episode of Farmer's Kitchen with me, Helen Farmer, presented by Spinney's. And huge thanks to JA for letting us take over their kitchen here at Palm Tree Court. You can watch it online, check out all the behind-scenes action too. And we'll be back some more eating inspiration next time. Thank you.